I almost missed it tonight. <laughs> so, hi, happy Thursday. Uh, welcome to another uh, Thursday night live here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds. So, I'm a little distracted today for quite a few reasons. Uh, hey there, welcome everybody. Uh, we had a neighbor's chickens hatch a clutch of babies that are just absolutely adorable and they're right over there um, but I can't really approach them so uh, it'll just be us tonight all right so let me get comfy here for just a second we've got some awesome stuff to talk about tonight but I'm not ready there we go I was totally distracted tonight by chickens <laughs> All right, hey there, so Mary here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and today we're gonna talk about pollination. Uh, we've got a lot of questions about pollination recently, and I wanted to clarify and clear up some misconceptions, uh, do a little myth busting today, actually. So if you have any questions about pollination, just give me a holler, let me know what your questions are. If you're brand new and you're just joining me here for the first time, welcome. Uh, I am Mary from Mary's Heirloom Seeds and drop us a comment, let me know where you are and let me know what you're doing this weekend. It should be another beautiful weekend. And this is gonna be another one of those short and sweet videos. Uh, it is my birthday weekend. I almost didn't go live, but I knew that there was a lot of questions that I keep getting that needs some answers. <laughs> All right, so tonight we're gonna talk about pollination. Uh, most importantly is some of the myths uh, about growing and pollination. Sorry, like I said, I'm totally distracted and trying to give you guys a good video today, but there, I'll just take it here. Um, we're outside and it was a little windier earlier, so it's not very stable. All right, so first of all, let me get to the awesome announcements we have. So today is September 9th, uh, and we have a couple awesome things going on right now. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so ASAP. Uh, if you haven't checked out our giveaway, you definitely need to check out the giveaway. We have a giveaway going on right now. I am choosing a winner on September 12th, uh, but the giveaway goes through September 11th, which is a Saturday through midnight. So after that, we're gonna pick a, give a, a winner on the 12th. You can enter if you're in the US. Uh, that's really the only requirement is you have to be in the US because we're not gonna ship it outside of the US. Our giveaway is posted at marysheirloomseeds.com on Mary's blog. It's probably the first or second post on our blog. And if you're not sure, I'll put it in the comments below once I'm done with this video. Uh, next, Yesterday, I announced an awesome, hey David, uh, yesterday I announced an awesome seed pack uh, specifically for my birthday. <laughs> uh, and this is an awesome seed pack that we are offering 50% off through September 15th. That's 2021, depending on when you're watching this video. Once uh, that date is through, um, at the end of September, 9th, September 15th, 2021 that will no longer be available right now. Like I said, it's 25% off. So it's definitely something you don't want to miss if you want some seeds. If I can, hey Alan, um, if I can, I will try to film a video at a later time. Right down that walkway over there, there's a mama, hey Robert, there's a mama hen with a bunch of babies. And I did a video the other day and I I don't know where I posted it. I think I posted on my personal page. Um, I'll try and post it at uh, my uh, Sunshine Homestead page. It's just kind of a personal fun page. And all you can hear is little peeps. You can't really see the baby chicks. All right, so we're gonna talk about pollination. Um, a lot of this I've actually already discussed in depth. Um, in an older video on our Facebook page titled Promiscuous Plants. Um, and honestly, squash is the promiscuous plant of the garden world. It really and truly is. And that's where some of the myths come into play. Uh, so this, this whole topic is something that is discussed over and over and it's kind of 
like overkill in some of the gardening groups. But I wanted to kind of dispel some of the myths involved in pollination and cross-pollination. Uh, so the simple explanation of pollination is the transfer of pollen to allow fertilization. Pretty simple. Hey Nancy, thanks for joining us. Now cross-pollination on the other hand is a little trickier, uh, except for corn. Okay, corn is the exception. Cross-pollination shows up in second generation plants from saved seeds. So I'm gonna kind of repeat myself a couple times because it's really important. I have seen so many times where people have posted pictures of their squash, for example, and it's like a yellow and a green squash and it's, it's two-tone. And they say, I planted this, and keep in mind when I say this, these are not my customers that I'm mentioning. I'm talking about just general garden world, social media posts, uh, random Reddit uh, pictures um, of people that are wondering why their squash looks different. Um, I haven't had this feedback from our customers, definitely a plus. Um, if you save your seeds, from squash that was cross-pollinated and you grow it, that's when you're gonna see the effects of cross-pollination. But if you bought seeds from Mary's Heirloom Seeds and you planted them, um, you're going to get true seeds. Uh, you're not gonna get different types and different colors and weird randomness. So I have seen where people have maybe traded seeds from somebody else or they had volunteers in their garden. This is not a volunteer. Uh, they had volunteers in their garden and they're like, hey, what is this weird random squash? Uh, one of the, something I mentioned in an older video, like I mentioned, promiscuous plants, um, is something called toxic squash syndrome or toxic squash. Uh, and it's, what happens is if you have a wild gourd that crosses with your squash um, and then you eat baby chicks, and then you eat the second generation plants from that, um, it can make you sick. Uh, and that conversation started when I was talking to my friend Christina, and she was talking about buying uh, pumpkins or squash from a roadside stand and then saving the seeds and using them in her garden. And honestly, I think that's a great option, but if you don't know if those plants cross-pollinated with a non-edible squash, you have to be careful about it. So that's just my little one little clip of warning. Now, why is corn the exception? Corn is the exception because you're literally eating the seeds for next year. So when you grow corn, uh, those seeds, the kernels of the corn are the seeds. So if you planted right here, you see I have one type of corn planted. Um, the seeds will cross-pollinate if you have multiple uh, multiple types of corn uh, and they might show up as cross-pollinated first generation because like I said you're literally eating the seeds. David says I only had one lonely pumpkin this year but it's awesome I'll be making soup not uh, my ornamental corn did not grow you said. It was a rough uh, hey Nev thanks for joining us uh, it was a rough year for a couple people um, as far as squash and corn goes. Uh, my corn over here is doing really well. Uh, my squash on the other hand, while it is growing, um, I've already had squash vine borers kill one of them. So fingers crossed I get a couple more. I will turn the camera around in a couple seconds and we're going to show you what male and female flowers look like on a squash plant. Uh, but right now we're talking about corn. So corn is wind pollinated. So for best results for corn pollination, you want it in a cluster. See that? You want it in a circle, in a square. You want it tightly bunched together, not like right next to each other, but you want it clumped together if you're growing in a small area. If you're growing two acres of corn, not a problem. But if you're growing a general small garden, uh, you want to, one, you want to plant the same variety together. You don't really want to mix these. And then you want to grow them in a clump. Uh, you do not want to grow a single long row of corn. You're not going to get great results from germination. Like I mentioned, cross-pollination um, 
corn is wind pollinated and every one of those little silks needs that pollen to go through to pollinate your kernels. So super important. Uh, this is one of those times that bees aren't necessarily a requirement of corn pollination because like I said, it's wind pollinated. Uh, now, here's a question. Can I plant cucumber, melon, and squash together? The answer is yes and no. <laughs> uh, yes, you can plant those three together, but you might not want to plant them together. You're not gonna be worried about pollination, but those three varieties have some pretty heavy pest issues that they share similar pest issues. So some people prefer to plant them in different areas, kind of make a little bit of a barrier between them so that you can kind of mitigate your damages as far as pests are concerned. So that's one option for you. Uh, by the way, if you're just joining me, we've got some awesome announcements I made in the beginning of the video. Uh, we have a seed giveaway going through September 11th, and we have a seed sale going through the 15th. Um, if you check out marysheirloomseeds.com, right at the homepage, hey Christian, right on my homepage, um, I forgot to ask if I'm fuzzy. I'm pretty close to uh, where our router is, so I'm hoping it's okay. Um, but we're in a different part of my garden this today, and I am so excited. I'm gonna share with you in just a minute. Um, cucumber, squash, and melon do not cross-pollinate. Uh, they are different species, but, uh, oh, thanks, Alan. Uh, but squash can cross-pollinate with other squash. Melon can cross-pollinate with other melon. Same with cucumber, can pollinate with other cucumber. But you're not gonna have a hybrid variety of a melon and a squash. Uh, so something to consider. Again, one of those myths that you see around, um, just because it can cross-pollinate with, with other varieties within the same, so uh, yellow squash, yellow crookneck squash, can cross-pollinate with zucchini, for example, but it's not necessarily gonna cross-pollinate with uh, white wonder cucumber, so just as an example. Uh, but like I said, they do share similar pests, so you might wanna kind of spread them out to mitigate the damages. Uh, peppers and tomatoes, a perfect example. Um, if you planted peppers and tomatoes together, uh, you're not gonna get a hybrid pepper tomato. That's just not the way it works. Yes, they are both in the nightshade family, uh, but they are also mainly self-pollinating, meaning they don't necessarily require a massive amount of pollinators like squash does. Uh, but they are still in, uh, they, they are still in a family of their own. So no, you're not gonna get pepper tomatoes, as David says, exactly. But that's one of those uh, myths that I see that you can't plant your peppers with your tomatoes because you're gonna get some hybrid pepper tomato. It's not how it works. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you male and female squash. So it means standing up. Hey Nate, thanks for joining us. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. Yay, there we go. All right, so somewhere in that mass is a mama and her baby chicks. Um, no, peppers and tomatoes are nightshades, but they are not related. So we're gonna go in here real quick. This is one of my squash that is being affected by some borers. So this right here, I'm trying not to step on my other plants. This right here is a male flower. Uh, you see it's just the flower and your stem. Now this over here is a female flower because you see the small squash and the flower. So this is how you're gonna identify a male and female flower. They have a male flower and a female. And there we go. Let me turn this back around so I'm not, ha, there we are. Um, so that is the easiest way to identify. Um, melons, squash, cucumber, uh, they have male and female flowers and uh, you need both to pollinate. Usually you have the male flowers are produced first and then afterwards you have male and female flowers. And usually the, fe the male flowers fall off and then you have male and female flowers that are produced. I do, that is another question that I get from customers is all my flowers are falling off. 
and that is normal in the beginning. Uh, but if it continues with your male and female flowers, either you have possibly a phosphorus issue um, or you have a poor pollination issue. If I could get closer to those chicks, I would be so stoked, but I can't. She's not going to let me. Uh, so let's talk about pollination. Let's talk about poor pollination. Uh, that is another issue that I have had people ask me about. Uh, and what can you do about poor pollination? So if you have a lot of, uh, even if you have a lot of pollinators, maybe you still have some pollination issues, you might consider uh, hand pollinating. And hand pollinating, it sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is. Uh, it can be as simple as a Q-tip um, or a small paintbrush or makeup brush if you've got one. Uh, you can even just take the male flower and uh, rub the pollen into the female flower. Totally easy. Uh, but that's something that you can consider. Like I said, even if you have bees, pollinators, things like that, if you are still having pollination issues, that's an option for you. Now, how do you, how do you figure out if you've got pollination issues? Usually it is, like you saw on there, you've got the male and the female flowers, right? If you have your female, uh, the, the fruit that is not mature, it's a teeny tiny baby and it's not even really developing yet. If it starts to shrivel up and die, that is chances are it was not pollinated. So that's where you want to come in and you want to do some hand pollinating. Um, if you have fruit on your plant, your squash, that grows larger and it shrivels up and dies or it turns yellow at the end, that's a possibility of what's called uh, blossom end rot. Uh, Regina, ants can assist with pollination, but oftentimes they are farming aphids. Uh, so <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Uh, aphids have a, a sweet substance that they emit and ants will farm them for their sweetness. I, it, it sounds weird, but it's true. Um, it's definitely not one of those weird myths. So if you have a massive amount of ants, I would highly recommend checking out your plants. Um, I don't encourage ants in my garden. Uh, I don't go on the war path and kill everything if I see ants, but I am always very aware because usually when you have an abundance of ants, you have an abundance of aphids. And aphids, oops, sorry, aphids can sap um, your plant of energy that's very important energy for it to grow. So it's definitely something to keep in mind that you wanna look for uh, in your garden. Uh, so we talked about pollination of different, oh yeah, see, um, so that's one of the times that I definitely like blast them off or if it's early in the stage, I'll use some diatomaceous earth on the ground. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't overdo it on uh, the diatomaceous earth because it can harm beneficial insects um, if it gets on them. Uh, so if I, have I, if I have flowering plants, I usually don't sorry I'm dropping everything um, so I usually won't use it on um, if I've got flowering plants right away all right so we got we talked about uh, squash we talked about peppers we talked about tomatoes we talked about corn um, we talked about blossom and rot so that's something that you can find on our website as well <sighs> did I give you enough information about pollination today uh, if you're on Facebook, you can check out some of our videos, some of the more, some of the live videos we did in January of 2021 was when we did the video on um, promiscuous plants, when we talked about this kind of in depth as well. Uh, but it was one of those nice cold days where I wasn't outside, I was inside and it's really nice to be outside. This here is uh, my, one of my three sisters garden. And I will have to update my video. Um, and here's why. I'll give you a little, a little information before I go. I was going to plant beans here. But I have cowpeas instead, so I didn't plant them. I left the cowpeas, and they are a climbing pea. So I didn't plant the um, 
the rattlesnake pole beans like I said I would in the video, I actually planted okra instead. So instead of using a climbing uh, pole bean, I used a cow pea. I used sweet corn, which doesn't have the strongest of stalks. Um, and I used a winter squash that is spreading like crazy. So that is the update on that. And part of the reason I didn't use the, the rattlesnake pole bean is I didn't want it to cross pollinate uh, with anything else that I was growing here because I'm growing some of these for seed. So that's it. Uh, we talked about squash pollination, um, some of the myth busting um, of different issues that people have with pollination. So if you have any questions, you can send an email to mary at maryshairloomseeds.com. We have another video uh, on pollination. It was done years ago, uh, but it's still relevant. And I showed a lot more information about the different, what the different uh, male and female flowers look like in a squash plant. Um, don't forget to check out our giveaway. It ends September 11th. Uh, that's Saturday, like two days. Um, and don't forget to check out our seed sale. Um, it's just a single combo pack that I made for my birthday just to kind of celebrate and give you guys something special to add. Um, and if I can get the mama and babies uh, on video, I will post it to our YouTube channel. It'll just be something short and sweet, but it's super cute. You can just hear them cheeping and peeping. Um, all right, so I am Mary at Mary's Heirloom Seeds signing off. If you've got any questions, you can always send an email to mary at maryshairloomseeds.com. You can check out our website, which is maryshairloomseeds.com, and that's where you're going to find all this awesome information. Um, I'm signing off because I'm getting eaten by bugs. Um, I hope you have an awesome evening and happy planting.